Hello, Sim Gamers. Welcome back to some Let's Play Sailwind. We are hanging out in the Firefish Town Market. Um, probably going to buy some snacks and stuff for us to snag and eat along the way. Um, this fish is very, very good at feeding a lot of hunger bar, but so are these oranges. So I'm going to snag one of these, grab another one to put in my pocket for later. <clears throat> um, I do believe my water is out, so how about I um, recycle the empty bottle, grab a fresh one. Actually, I'll just go ahead and fill up with water. Make sure I'm all set for the road. Today's navigation task is we're actually going to just sail the empty, em empty vessel. I'm not going to bother taking any cargo or anything. Uh, back around to Kitchia Bay. And the reason for that is because Kitchia Bay is where the shipyard is. And I found this out by watching Dalton's um, YouTube series. I think it was the Tea Merchant. What was it? The Tea Merchant uh, episode 12. I'll make sure the link is in the description below. He's doing a pretty interesting um, Tea Merchant roleplay series. Or semi-roleplay, I guess you might say. I don't know exactly how to characterize it. So our first navigation challenge is going to be to get out of this bay <clears throat> alive and not aground. And it's a little bit hard to do with all this fog. But it looks like if we get... Oh, turn hard. If we get up around this uh, sandbar that's over here on starboard we can head out that direction okay we're gonna get ourselves centered on our new direction we're headed here and then unfurl all of our sails and get moving looks like some light weather is headed our direction Go ahead and tighten up this sheet winch. Fully unfurl here. I'm pretty sure we're clear ahead. Not if I have my sails do that though. So that differential wind pressure almost got me into real trouble <laughs> on the on the main and aft uh, main and mizzen masts. I'm going to let out a couple more here. Maybe tighten this up one more. Especially in some stronger winds. Just got to be cautious of that. All right, here's an update. Uh, we're getting pretty close, I think. I had to camp overnight because, you know, <laughs> it was just dark. So, um, yeah. Let's get our anchor weighed. And I, I can see some trees in the distance there. It should be fairly close to where we're headed to for Kitchia Bay, I think. So we ought to get there by probably noon, really. Get ourselves underway here. And then take a look at the shipyard in Kitchia Bay and see if, you know, kind of see what's available. See what we can afford. We only have 8,000 um, uh, Emerald Dragons. And not much other currency, so we may not be able to afford a whole bunch. But we'll go find out. Yes, as I'm looking at this map, the only place that has any greenery around here um, in this area of the map is Kijia Bay. So, I sailed east out of Firefish Town. Here, I'll pull up the map. Reminder to self to visualize this. I sailed east out of Firefish Town and uh, clockwise around the outside of the lagoon to find ourselves here on Kitchia Bay. 
or approaching Kajibe anyway. We'll have to figure out where to park to find the shipyard. And I'm sure every single place in this in this um, lagoon, from what I can tell, have some interesting navigational challenges. I was peeking at Dalton's stream, uh, Dalton's play, uh, the YouTube video, just long enough to find out where he went. Um, okay, well, where the heck are we? Because I noticed in a screenshot or something that he was at a shipyard, so I scanned through just enough to gather the information about where the shipyard was. Everything else is still going to be new to me. We're seeing uh, the town of Kitchia Bay uh, resolve around in front of us here, so we're going to start making our way with some sail configuration to get in there. Looks like it's an actual bay. Can I see what's so when I get in there, I'm going to have to figure out how to... Oh, I might be able to sail around through there. I don't know. Might have to do some crazy mooring line techniques or something to get back out. Okay, I'm going to raise my mainsail here a little bit. To intentionally make it less efficient. And we're pulling in and going to dock on this shipyard side of the bay. Or I kind of wonder if both sides of the bay aren't shipyards. Yeah, and I have an orange right here to help me with my hunger. Yeah, it looks like this bay is a dead end. Interesting. That's going to be a pretty fun navigational challenge. So the main dock for dropping off shipping is over on port side. Shipyard and starboard here. And uh, we're at a point now where we can actually just withdraw all sail because wind pressure and momentum will carry us the rest of the way for sure. Okay, let's see what configurations we have available to us for our 8100 Emerald Dragons. Um, if I go to my masts, and change my bowsprit. Oof, that's 4,500 just to lengthen the bow, to put in a longer bowsprit. Um, and what sails do I have available? We have some big junk sails. So we could do a 12 yard junk sail, we could stick in, uh, you know, mass too short for that gaff. Um, what about Top mast isn't a bad idea. Uh, 
Oh, but it's it's a whole separate mast. It's not like it. It's not like it makes my current mast taller. Moving this mast to the center of the ship. Okay, so with what we have, we're probably just putting on some new sails, if anything. We're looking at uh, 12 yard square junk. And we don't have enough for a 13 yard gaff, but a six yard gaff. We could do. Fin sail. Ooh. Oh. And you can paint them. What's the biggest one we can put on? Wait, we can mount a 10 yard fin sail? That's crazy. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool though. Okay, let's, uh, what if we go with that? What would we add here? We'd add... Can't add a junk jib because the mass is too short. Uh, the 20 yard. Can we do 16? We could do 16, but the way the... Sail collides with the deck is not aesthetically pleasing for me. Like, see how it's clipping into the deck? So I'm not going to do that. Um, is there a point at which this doesn't collide, but doesn't clip? That That's where it doesn't collide and doesn't clip anymore. So if we're only going to have one stay line, well, let's let's see what we do with the rear here. Rotation angles left. That's one thing to pay attention to is those rotation angles. So. <laughs> left and right angle five degrees in that configuration, right? <clears throat> it sort of slots in there, but it doesn't have any room to actually move. And in all of the cases, it's obstructed. Um, that was the eight yard. What about the seven yard? Oh, here we go. I don't want it clipping. 70 each way. That's pretty good. And what about this one? 65 and 70. Does this change it all? Change the dynamic at all? Nope. Hmm. Okay, so we could do those two fin sails with that rotation angle. Could be really good. And then that's only 1700 Emerald Dragons. Um, let's see if we... Oops. Um what this looks like with a longer stay and a bigger sail up front. Um, stay sails. Small junk Genoa just doesn't have enough yardage to be worth it. 20 yard. Mass too short. 16 yard. So still can't do 16 with that. 13. And this says the sails collide. Until I get it up that high. And that's 8,300 dragons anyway that I couldn't afford that if I wanted to. So... 
Um, changing the bowsprit doesn't seem like it's in the cards, but we ought to be able to add another sail on here, I would think. 10 yard junk jib. Have to bring it up nice and high until uh, to where it doesn't collide. Uh, what about a lower with another something down here? How about another 10 yard junk jib? Okay, how about a small junk jib? Only problem with this is that like this whole sail covers the pretty much the same area, so there's really no point in having that one, right? Well, maybe I can um, go ahead and invest the money on a long bow sprit. If I invest the money in a long bow sprit, it'll be easier to replace later on. Well, that's only 8147 Emerald Dragons. Maybe I have enough for that. All right. <clears throat> um 8147. That's going to make close haul performance crazy good. Do I have enough? <laughs> I do! Oh, shoot. I forgot to color this one. Ah, uh, oh well. I went ahead and uh, between episodes, grabbed my mooring lines and hauled uh, our ship over to this side of the dock after we completed our work in the shipyard. Just to make things a little bit easier for us, uh, we're getting ready to take out our newly uh, redecorated um, sandbuck out for a maiden voyage. But in order to do so, we need to find a good reason to do to do exactly that. So I'm taking a look at some missions. I guess we could just sail back to Firefish Town, be as good a spot as any. It looks like there's. Um, A little bit of money to be made along the way. So I'm gonna get loaded up on these. We've got some oranges, forest mushrooms, mead, water, uh, mead and water. So I'll get those loaded on and then catch up with you in a bit. All right, we are fully loaded, so we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves underway here. Release our mooring lines. Give ourselves a little shove. Just to get moving. Oops. And here we go. We're going to unfurl our new sails and really sort of see how they perform. They're very, very pink compared to what I expected. That's okay. So a piece of advice that I've been taking to heart is that um, when tightening down um, a sheet winch, or I'm sorry, yeah, the sheet winch for any of these jibs, these jib sails, 
Um, I should be tightening down the leeward side. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm creating a very strong sailing triangle. Um, in real life, tightening down the windward side, the windward line, is incorrect. Because these lines are not meant to be uh, load-bearing. Or, I mean, the load they're meant to take is, is not... Um, Horizontal, it's meant to be more vertical. And we can actually do a little something back here to make sailing in this wind easier. In fact, we're going to flip everything around. Now, someone in chat in comments can correct me if I'm wrong, but when the sail flips over like this, this That's called a jibe. That that particular maneuver, when the sail flips through the wind, uh, the the wind goes through the back of the sail. Is that correct? Someone let me know in the comments. All right, we're going to sail down this way again. This is sort of familiar territory down here. <laughs> Now that we've been this way once. We know we're going along the sandbar. <clears throat> See, we're going along this... You know, these two humps of sand. That island. And basically up in, up in that direction where the mast is pointing. Is where we're really headed. This will be a nice little uh, maiden voyage to see how... The modified sandbuck with these sort of fishtail sails are working. This comment comes from Nico Island who says, I'm getting to Firefish today. Bought a junk to stay on theme and it's also just a good ship. I agree. When I sailed the junk in previous Let's Plays, I really enjoyed how the wheelhouse was configured. And the junk's rudder authority is perfect for navigating challenging places like Firefish Lagoon. That song was Meteor Binge by Harris Heller, available on the Streambeats Lo-Fi playlist. Plenty of tight, inter interesting navigational challenges in here. And even in light wind, these sails can really make this uh, sandbuck move. What we're likely to do is run on the... Um, the jib only for a bit. Need to get on the wheel. All the other sails are pulled up. We are completely running on the on the jib only. Which is providing plenty of forward momentum right now, considering how tight these quarters are. Now, oh, we're gonna be in town soon enough. I could grab a meal there. Alright. Let's go ahead and retract the our stay sail here. Completely get that furled. And get ready to moor up and pull our ship in place. 
Mead delivery complete. Hopefully coming up water delivery complete. Maybe I didn't get a chance to drink anything out of it. That would be nice. Correct. All right. Nice. Mead and water delivered. Now, it's been a little while since I've actually done any um, trades on my own dime, and my pocketbook is really suffering for it, considering how much I invested in these new sales. So that's what I'm probably going to be looking to do here pretty soon, is start uh, turning my money into more money by not only running missions, but also running um, just buying and selling trade goods. Here's the last of the mushrooms, or the forest mushrooms. All right, not bad, huh? <clears throat> you know. Got a few emerald dragons out of it. We can use that money to buy some snacks and food and supplies. Yeah, this is the place that sells oranges. And orange is definitely worth a, a, a decent meal. So we're going to munch up some oranges, put another one in my pocket for a rainy day. Uh, our water supplies are all fine. How much do these cost? 243. I just spent a bunch of money on oranges. Well, there we have it. That's it for this episode of Let's Play Sailwind. I rather like the new ship configuration. It looks pretty good and gives me similar performance to what I was expecting before. If not, maybe a little bit more uh, flexibility and capability because of the, the, the stay sail. And we'll have to kind of see what the different characteristics of these particular sails are compared to the other ones over additional journeys. But until then, I'm SimGamer. And this has been Sailwind Early Access.